Good morning, everyone. How many of you would like to have more influence? <laughs> and how many of you would like to have more money? Yeah. <laughs> and how many of you want both? <laughs> exactly. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, there's some more people still coming down. Um, so I'm going to give it just a few minutes to let more people come in. But while we do that, just get us awake this morning just to do a little something, talk a little bit. This is going to be conversational, so um, most of what I'm going to talk about is on PowerPoint. We all can read, so uh, I'm not going to say anything that you can't stop me and say, uh, hey, wait, what do you mean by that? So what's on the PowerPoint is the beginning, and then whatever we want to continue to discuss, we can do that too. Um, but in the meantime, while we wait for just a few more people to arrive, who came the furthest? Who came from... I think you came from down the street, right? So you, <laughs> so it's not you. Who, who would say they can't? Yes. India. Yeah. I think you want. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Unless there's somebody out here that came from, wait, wait. Say. Hawaii. Okay. Okay. That's pretty far. Ah, okay. Yeah. You guys are competing there. <laughs> So just being able to come to this you know, conference and travel from India or down the street uh, is a lot of fun. And I know a lot of us, what I've learned is that people say they can't talk about money with all of their friends. So being in a place where you can talk about money and, and with another expert, so it's not like you talking at somebody, but having a great conversation. So what are some of the conversations that you've had this weekend or this week, I should say, that you're like, that is something I'm, I'm going to remember. Anybody? Really? See, I like that. Yes. OK. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and so I'll definitely remember that and why it was very interesting to see see how they were using the platform to reach their target and target market. So I think it's very useful for those types of networking. So I'll tell you some of my questions that I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. Speaking of speaking of knowledge, are you talking about the Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, the G4 is. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I totally agree. And then and you have so many restrictions that you have to like take and, you know, be as creative as you can, which is a great reason why we're talking about this topic, because I started as a financial advisor and because I had so many restrictions online, I had to get other people to talk about me online so that I could, you know, get online. Otherwise, attorneys get involved and <laughs> they're like, well, did I say that? <laughs> So um, yeah, that's it. That's great. Anybody else feel like they've gotten something that they're like, this is what I'm taking away. I see wheels turning. It's like, oh, wh which one? You got you learned so many things. Yeah. Um, I just went to his and her money yesterday, and um, just a reminder. I know you get caught up with trying to get out there and make money. Uh, just to remind that we got in this to help other people. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's a great, and that would be a great segue for me to get started. So <laughs> uh, I asked that question too, how may I serve? Um, and when I, I just heard about FinCon last year, um, Patrice Washington introduced me to it. And when I thought about how may I serve, because I didn't have that uh, online experience that some of you have, for me, it was a lot of offline experience. And when I thought, when I answered that question, how may I serve, it was, well, maybe I can combine online and offline, teach people what I've done, and they can take what I have and use it in their own way, because some of these are my ideas. And then if you want more ideas, we can talk, because I've always got ideas. Um, so we can talk more and see how you can connect what I've done to what you're doing. So Part of that is to give away your content, which a lot of you are probably already doing. 
and we're going to find some new ways of doing that. And how many of you use LinkedIn? Okay, everybody, good. So we'll use LinkedIn to, to see how to get deeper in that. So welcome, and I want to say you can be at like three or four other groups, so I thank you for coming to this group talk. I want you to take away some tools that can entice you to do some, to continue to connect with other professionals um, and share that share your target market. And then identify maybe some centers of influence that you might have been overlooking when, and, and missing some opportunities. Then we'll take some time to kind of define or refine your pitch if you haven't already done that lately. Think about some third party vendors that you work with that can help you maybe sponsor events or um, just help you deepen relationships. And then let's spark some ideas and talk more about how we can take this online experience offline in easy ways. So about me, I'm Kene Corder and I'm a best-selling author, financial therapist, and the CEO of Presidential Lifestyle. So Presidential Lifestyle is a financial wellness company and we focus on wealth in all of its forms. I, before joining the industry, I started out in the entertainment industry and I worked as the spokesperson for ABC's Extreme Makeover. I was on Extreme Makeover. I was also, from there, I went to the Oprah show and Good Morning America, uh, uh, Entertainment Tonight, all the magazine shows and then all the magazines, People Magazine, Marie Claire, uh, Par Marie Claire Polaris, uh, TV Guide, so all of those. From there, I decided, you know, I'm going to take the notoriety I've gotten and do something with it. I thought about finance, which I was a bright brain girl, like pretty creative, but I said, I'm going to go to this left brain world and see what I can do. <laughs> And so I combined those two, and it turns out that I had a lot of fun doing it, and so, but I wanted to bring more fun to it. Uh, and when I got my Series 7 license, I started doing events and talking about what we are doing in finance that could be fun. So we would do events like Financially Fabulous and stuff like that, and, and that was fun for me, and that brought like fun for my clients to, to events to, for my clients to have fun with their finances. So we, how can offline marketing help, right? You want to know what's in it for you. How can it help you? It helps you create deeper relationships, to create multiple streams of income, to create tax write-offs, and enjoy your work more. And then make a name for yourself online and offline. So where do you begin? So a lot of you are already using LinkedIn, which is great. One of the things I love about LinkedIn is to be able to search. So if you have your phone right now, pull it out. If you have the LinkedIn app on your phone, I encourage you to go ahead right now and just search. What I do is I work with business owners. So I go to the advanced search and I'll put in, let's say for instance, I work with, I work with divorcees, couples, and business owners. So let's say the business owners that I work with. A lot of times I work with dentists. So I'll put in dentist, search my field for my first connections and my second connections. And then I start to tell them things like, if I, if I see a dentist that I know and they know somebody I know, then I'll start a con conversation on what we know, what we have in common. Oh, you know so-and-so, I know so-and-so. How do you know them? And start to talk to them. Um, if I'm having an event, I'll invite them to an event because it's so much easier to start a conversation when you're like giving something away. Hey, I'm having an event, free drinks. Want to come? You know, that's a real easy conversation to have, right? Um, and then also, I'll also trade information. So if I know they're interested in something, for example, there was one dentist and she had a luxury toothpaste brand. So if I found out about a luxury event, I made sure I told her. I'm like, hey, Bentley's having an event over here. You should be there. So we started connecting on that because she's like, you know about all the luxury events. I'm like, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> so that became a connection for us. And you, you narrow it down, though. Don't go like getting 20, 30 people. Just narrow it down to top 10. And for me, again, I work with business owners. So I like dentists. I like dentists because um, they are busy, but I can still get in there. Some doctors, you just can't get in with them. But dentists allow you some time to get in there. So that's why I like working with dentists. Um, also, they understand referrals. And they understand appointments really well. And so because they understand referrals and appointments and 
just, I was a financial advisor with Morgan Stanley, so we had a lot of uh, vendors that would come to me. Well, dentists have that same thing, and because there's so much synergy between our businesses, the way we do business, uh, I, I could use my business model and help them grow their business. Because if they have more money to invest with me, then I become the best financial advisor ever, right? I help them grow their business, plus I help them grow their money. So that's why I, went, I partnered with them a lot to show them how to grow their business. One of the things I did too was the company that, the man who started 1-800-DENTIST, he had a marketing CD that you just pop in your car and listen as you drive wherever you go. Well, he was giving it away for free and I found out about this. So I said, oh, cool. Send me the CD and I'll give it away to dentists. So I would tell dentists, hey, I have this great marketing CD. I'll bring it over to your office or I'll see you at the next event and I'll give it to you. And if I'm giving them, if I'm giving them content to help them grow their business for free and it really works and it's created by the man who started 1-800-DENTIST, every dentist wants to be connected with him, that's valuable information. So little things like that, you just have to be creative. Um, but little things like that helped me get in with them. So go live. Um, we have been going to meetups here. Um, FinCon is going live. Eventbrite is a great way to find events. And, and what happens is you just search the events in your area with a few keywords that are right with your target market. And that has helped me a lot. Eventbrite is a great place. And then also with your own events, whether you charge or not, you can use Eventbrite and it'll, it'll, it'll push it out there for you until everybody what you have going on online as well as offline. And events are a great way. And I'll tell you a little later how to get those events paid for. So Presidential Lifestyle is a luxury brand, so this might not resonate with everyone, but we, we join um, country clubs or private social clubs. So in, in Atlanta, where I'm from, the City Club of Buckhead um, or the Gathering Spot is one. And the Gathering Spot is the younger version. It's like the millennial social club. And the City Club of Buckhead is like the older, you know, uh, mahogany, wood, that kind of club. So we, we have events with them. Most clubs have events for members. Every club has at least 10 events for members. But they're trying to figure out what events to have. Well, you can go in. The events, you don't, you don't have to put up any money because they're going to have events anyway. And give them a great idea for an event, and they'll fund it. So that's one way to get an event funded. Um, the other way is to partner with one of the members who has more money than you and bring in, you say, oh, I'll do all the marketing, online marketing, but I'm gonna need you to pay for the venue. So you can, you can collaborate and that's a way to, to, to get it paid for. I like using the club because the club will push it out to the other members and then all the members will know that you're having an event and people come and that's a great way to meet people too offline. Charity events are really good because, well, let me say, it can be, you gotta work it right. So some charity events, you walk in a room and they're like a thousand people because they're 10 tables, 10 people, it's like so many people and you're like, who do I meet, I don't know. Well, you really just need to focus on your table and the table next to yours. So when you get there early, whoever gets there early at the table next to you, you get to know them and you talk about them and you ask them for a few of their cards and you say, I'm gonna make sure I tell people about you at my table. Make sure you tell people about me at your table and you leave them a couple cards and you start having conversations halfway through the meal or something, right before the meal. You pop back over and you're like, hey, how are you? Now you know them and then they start to introduce you to the other people at the table. So you got those 10 people and you got your 10 people at your table. So you, you've met at least 20 people in the room because it could, can be very overwhelming at these charity events. But if you focus on your table and the table next to you, that's the great way to meet at least 20 people in the room. So what questions, are, are there any questions so far? Great, oh yes. Oh, so I go from completely creative, like I partner with a makeup company, this is for women if you do business with women. I partnered with a makeup company and we did um, Financially Fabulous. And we, she did like makeup demonstrations, helped them with colors and all of that. It was so unfinancially related. But if you know women like to spend ma money on stuff like makeup, cosmetics can be really expensive and a big part of our budget. Um, and so I just at the end kind of tied in how to make this effective in your budget. And when you actually, when you use a luxury brand, they last longer so you don't 
spend as much money. It seems like it, you, don't, you spend a lot of money because it's $20 or $30 for mascara. But if it lasts a year, you know, it's not that much money. So um, some, some of those tips I would give out because the makeup line, it was a luxury makeup line and, you know, and not everybody wants to spend $30 on lipstick. But, <laughs> but when you put it in perspective and you start to do the numbers, like if you have this for 365 days, it really only costs you this. And you go like, oh, okay, now I can justify this lipstick purchase. <laughs> so that was one um, for, uh, for my man because I, wor I worked in a very male dominated industry. So we would do golf outings. And then once, once we just did a golf, um, expert came out and kind of gave tips and tools. So we didn't actually go to a golf course, but the golf expert came out and gave tips and tools. And we did that on, in the tennis, on the tennis level too. The, the tennis pro came out and gave tips and tools. So that was a, a really good event too. And again, it's a luxury brand. So some of my ideas might be a little, you know, ridiculous, but, uh, <laughs> but those are the ones that, the, that I feel like worked really well. And then in Atlanta, there's this thing um, and I, I'm probably going to sound really silly, but big green egg, and I don't use it, but a lot of people do. And so we did, we did in the back of the um, social club, they have this really beautiful courtyard. And so we did a big green egg event out there and the men loved it. <laughs> So that's, a, and, and Big Green Eggs would do it because they want to get, that's marketing for them. So they brought the food, they brought the eggs or whatever they call it. <laughs> and so we had a lot of fun out there. You know, it's a beautiful setting. There's, you know, food and, and then men are learning new recipes to making their um, pork and beef. <laughs> So that's, it's so many ideas out there because everybody else needs marketing too. So if you say, I have a way, and nobody is really good at online marketing like we are. So if you can say, I'll market it online, I just need you to bring the big, big green egg, you know? <laughs> so those are some ideas. So be memorable. When you first meet people, now online is easy to be memorable because you have all this content and you, um, you know, it's, it's like tips to do this and tools to do that and three steps to this. So you have a way to be memorable. But you do, when you go to networking events, it's hard to be memorable because remember what we said at the charity event, it's 100 people in the room, it's 200 people in the room. So how do they remember you? So my name is Kene and usually I try to figure out some way to help people remember it. Um, or I'll say it's Kine, it's spelled K-I-N-E, and there's an accent A-Goo over the E. And then people say, oh, I say, oh, it's French. And that sounds fancy, right? So, <laughs> so people remember that. But let's say, you know, you have a, um, a last name that's connected with some celebrity, and then you're like, yeah, that's my cousin or something, you know, like, oh, and no relation to the, you know, football player. And they're like, oh, yeah, because I thought it was. But it is memorable, right? <laughs> Um, another way is to just ask a question. So after you do the introductions, ask a question. And one of the questions that I really like to ask is what superpower is needed to do what you do? So first of all, that makes them feel good because they're like, oh, you know how difficult it is to, for me to do what I do, right? You just sounded like you cared. Um, <laughs> and then you get, they get a chance to brag. They're like, oh, I need to read people's minds. And sometimes I feel like Magneto or whichever one it is. But <laughs> read people's minds. And so you're like, really? You know, you get all into it. And so that's a memorable conversation. And you didn't say a word, but all of a sudden they think you're like so cool. And they're like, oh, I love talking to you, Steve. That feels, they feel so good all of a sudden. And all they don't remember, they may not even remember the conversation you had, but they remember how they felt when they were talking to you. So that memory will stay with them. And then another question that I ask because I talk about prosperity is what's your idea of prosperity? And when people get to start talking about that, because it's different from the work that they do. For me, my idea of prosperity is freedom and ease. Freedom and ease. I just want it to be easy. My dance instructor, I do dance um, outside of, you know, when I like to have fun. And he calls me easy breezy because I'm like, oh, that's too hard. I'm not doing that move. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so if it's easy, it's for me. <laughs> if I feel free, like don't stick me into a schedule. No, it's easy breezy. So that's my idea of prosperity. And when we get to start, when I talk to people about what their idea of prosperity is, it's a really great conversation because they say, oh, well, I really love to travel. If I get to travel, I'm a happy girl or I'm a happy guy. You know, oh, as long as I get to play golf on, you know, four days a week, I'm happy. <laughs> like, 
So when they start talking about what they love, that's a different conversation. And it helps you be able to tie back in later because you can call them on it. And, they, and I have some relationships with clients and centers of influence. When I see them posting on Facebook or um, uh, Twitter that they're upset or they're tired or they didn't, and I can say, well, have you played golf lately? You know, or have you danced lately? You know, I can throw that in there and they're like, oh, she knows me so well. So, <laughs> so our connection is deeper. So let's talk about your elevator pitch. How many people feel like they have a great elevator pitch? Okay, cool. No worries, I'm not gonna ask you to say it. <laughs> I just wanna know the room. So when you come up with an elevator pitch, and, and, we, and just so I'm clear, everybody knows what elevator pitch. Okay, so the elevator pitch, I like to break it down this way. Who you are, what you do, who you do it for, and how you do it. So if you think about it that way, you really get a chance to talk in 30 seconds, explain who you are, and, and get them thinking about, ooh, how can I do business with her or him? Or who do I know that could do business with her or him? And so let's just break that down and make it real. So who you are. So I would say I'm Kene Corder best-selling author, financial advisor, not a financial advisor anymore, financial therapist and CEO of Presidential Lifestyle, a financial wellness company that focuses on wealth in all of its forms. So that, you can either break this up or you can say it all at one time. So if it's on your, if it's on your blog or if it's on your website, you're gonna say it all at once. If you're having a conversation, you may break it up into a few different sentences. So then you get to say, I speak to and consult with business owners or couples who are looking to define their idea of prosperity. And then as the conversation goes on, you're gonna go on to say, you know, I assist them by improving their financial well-being, helping them reduce stress around finances, and uh, defining their idea of prosperity. And then you talk more about it and, and you drop it in. Uh, I do this by my step-by-step -step prosperity program that helps them feel more confident about their financial future. So you can put that all in one, Again, if it's on your blog or if it's on your website, but of course, if you're having a conversation, you're gonna break that up a little bit. So take some time right now, I wanna suggest just to take a few seconds, like a minute, um, to write down some ideas right now on how you would do that for yourself. Who you are, so who you are and kind of what your company is and what you do, what are you known for? And then who do you do it for? Who do you like to work with? What's your target market? What's your favorite target market? Now, of course, you wanna say, oh, I can help anybody and everybody, but let's, let's try and narrow that down a little bit. Who do you like to work with? Who do you do it for? Now, what do you do? For me, I assist them in improving their financial well-being by giving them tools to navigate the money cycle, is what I say. And then how do you do it? Do you do it using your super system? Do you do it you know, because you were trained by you know, some money coach? Do you do it using a board game? <laughs> so what do you, how do you do it and we put that all together and of course you can work on that later but I just wanted to get you started because I know how it is when we come to events like this we walk away and we say shoot what did she say or what did he say and so I wanted to give you a chance to write it down a little bit and really get it ingrained in you so don't be afraid to narrow your target market a lot of times you ask people what they do, who they do it for, and they're like, oh, I can help anybody. Um, that just doesn't serve you well because you can be so much more effective if you choose a target market. So choose the gender. I say I work with business owners and couples. Now, when I work with business owners, it's usually women business owners who have been in business five to seven years. And when I work with couples, of course, that's 50% male, 50% female, um, unless I wanted to even narrow my target market and say, I, I work with same-sex couples. 
So you can do that, and there's a market for that. And, and, there, and as a financial advisor, I worked really hard at Morgan Stanley to get them to change the financial planning software because it would not let you put a male and a female in, I mean, a male and a male in there or a female and a female in there, um, same sex couple. And so they had to change the software. So if you say, like, even if you've done something like that, you put that in your spiel if that's what you do. Uh, in interest, what are those people interested in? Do they play golf, like you said? You know, are they playing tennis? Do they like the country club? What are their interests? So narrowing that down, income range. So for my clients, they are six-figure earners. They're usually making over 100000 If they're married, both people making over 100000 There's some tax uh, implications there. And so a lot of times I talk about my target market being people who want to save on taxes. Married, are they married? Are they single? Are they divorced? You know, do they have children? And then most of my couples, I narrow down, when I say I work with couples, I typically work with couples who have been married zero to two years, not the couples who have been fighting for 10 years over money. <laughs> That's a lot of work. So, so I'm, I've been narrow in that sense, and that's helped me. So I know those couples who have been married two to, zero to two years, they usually don't have children. So I don't go looking for them at the baby store, but I do go looking for them at Davis Bridal, you know. Um, and then mindset. What is the mindset around this target market? Are they socially responsible, you know, or whatever mindset they have? But what is the mindset? And then that's how you figure out where you end up. That's how you narrow your marketing dollars. So you're not spreading your marketing dollars everywhere, but you're saying, this is, I know where divorced women hang out, and that's where I'm going to hang out. I know where, you know, single mothers of you know, three children hang out. I know where tennis players hang out. I'm going to hang out there. So get really pointed in your target market. And then be thoughtful. So this is my favorite part. I love buying gifts. So my strategy is called the money cycle, and it's earn, grow, protect, gift, and enjoy your money. And so gifting is a big part, and we started this talking about how may I serve. And so this being thoughtful, if you think of gifts, and they don't have to be expensive, in fact, they can even be free. If you have vendors, for example, um, I know there are some um, financial planners in the room, you have vendors who are always trying to sell you stuff. So wholesalers like Fidelity, like Vanguard, they can sponsor events that you do. That's how I got all my events sponsored. It was by some of the wholesalers that I worked with. And that's one way. Invite people to an event and it's free food and drinks. You make some real good friends. If you invite people, oh, this is one of my favorite stories. So there was one guy who I was trying to get uh, in with and he was getting married. And he was really excited about this um, wedding that I wasn't invited to. But, <laughs> but so later I said, you know, I'm going to get in with him. I'm going to buy him a wedding gift. So he wore custom shirts every day, custom suit, custom shirt every day. Now, if you, if you or any of you wear custom, you know, you can never have too much custom shirts, too many custom shirts. If you wear anything, if you're a shopper, period, you know you're never going to turn down a shopping experience. So I found a company that allowed you to get a free shirt if you let them come in and inside you. So I said, great idea. So I told him, I'll, I'll get you in the door over here with somebody who wears custom every day if you give him that free shirt. I don't need a free shirt. Can you give it to him? He said, sure. So he goes in, he measures up, he gives him this free shirt. He's like, who does that? Who buys somebody a custom shirt? And I was like, oh, me, that's what I do for my clients. <laughs> <laughs> if you were my client, you could do this all the time, you know. And then the other one was there's an eyeglass place, and they have like Prada and Gucci and all the, you know, brand name sun eyeglasses. And so they give away a pair of sunglasses every month, some fancy, you know, Prada or Gucci sunglasses. So I would make sure I get, you know, clients' names in there. I say, hey, go get, let me give you this gift certificate for a free eye exam. And by the way, I entered your name to win the free Gucci sunglasses. Just want you to know that. And that kind of thing. And people are like, oh, thank you. Even if they don't win, they're like, oh my gosh, like they're really, really thankful. So you actually gave a gift, but you didn't even give a gift, you know? So this, things like that, I'm always thinking about ways to be th thoughtful. And if you can do that, then you get in good with people and they remember you. So you're, most, a lot of you in here are writers. Write a blog, include them in it, and I guarantee you they will send it out to their email list. Say something like, oh, it's so great working with Steve. He's the most responsible 
you know, financial advisor I know, you know, or it's so great working with Felicia. She's the most responsive, you know, person I know. So if you include them in that title, of course, if you include them in that blog, of course, they're going to send it out. Um, and some of these other things you may already be doing, like adding the, asking them to write something for you or asking if you can quote them. But what I find is that we quote people and then we never talk to them again. Go back, talk to them again, ask them for more quotes, but even more, invite them to those events and do some of the things that we've already talked about. Have you go to their events and ask to speak at their events. One of the other things I've done, and I'll pass these around, I, I gave people the chance to be on my business card. So <laughs> you can do it for free if you want, or you can charge for it. Have a couple more. So you can charge for it. So I call them presidential partners because the name of my company is Presidential Lifestyle. And on the card, I just added the clother that I talked about who gives away the free shirt. Um, I added an attorney that I work with. And, oh, and, and then presidential treatment was my other company and my, with I, that I partnered with my brother on. And so you give people the opportunity to be on your business card. Now this is for long term. This is for long term um, centers of influence. If you're going to be with somebody a long time, you guys have really built a relationship, then you can cross market. You can put them on your business card. I don't do that now anymore, but it, it worked really well because I was giving somebody my business card, I might even be giving them a referral. If I'm at a networking event and we're having a conversation, they may not necessarily need to meet me. They may need to meet one of my centers of influence. I'm gonna give them my card and say, hey, call me, this is the person I wanna introduce you to and remind me, and they don't even have to make notes on the cards. So here, remind me I'm gonna introduce you to this person, just send me an email or call me and we'll talk more about it. So I'm keeping the connection with them and I'm giving them a referral at the same time, and they still have my business card so they can't forget me. Remember, we're being memorable. So, so keep the party going. Once you quoted them in your blog, invite them to a cup of coffee or tea, you know, or have a phone call with them. So, hey, we quoted you, but I want to know more. You know, I want to know what superpower it takes to to do what you do. I want to know what your idea of prosperity is. Deepen the conversation more. Keep the party going. Invite them to something that you're having or even something you just know about. If you know that there's a meetup and you guys have the same target market, there's no competition because they're in a totally different industry than you are. So we have the same target market, but we do two different things. Thought you might want to know this. I, was, I met this person. You probably want to meet them. I thought about you while I was talking to them. If they think that they're on your mind, then you can make really good connections. One of the things that we do is a boot camp, um, whether it's a webinar or a live face-to-face, -face, we invite CPAs to just listen in for free. When I charge for it, but for CPAs, they can just listen in for free because I want them to send me their business clients. And so I'm like, oh, listen in. And if you hear anything that you want to pass on to one of your clients, or if you hear anything and you have questions, Ask me, we can go deeper on it. So they listen, a lot of times they listen in for free and they're like, oh, I'm so glad I listened in because I, now I really know what you do and I'll send this client to you because financial therapy is a you know, fairly new uh, term and so not everybody knows what financial therapy is. So when I say I do financial therapy, people have an idea of what that could be, but to actually listen to the webinar, it gives them a deeper understanding of what that is. So be memorable so we were already memorable and now we need to be more memorable and how do you how do you do that so you set another call you set another meeting you invite them to another event this is ongoing just like online marketing a lot of times we think offline marketing stops at some point but just like online marketing you keep going with it um, you wear your t-shirt every day so I answer my phone my my cell phone my personal cell phone st says Hi, you reached Kinei with Presidential Lifestyle. My friends are like, I know. <laughs> but it never stops. It never stops. And marketing is everything. It's in everything you do. And so from the t-shirts you wear to I have this notebook that I got from Vistaprint. It's $10. And so one of the things I do 
we have a, a, a product called the Prosperity Club. So this costs $10 with Vistaprint. I can print these and, pr and put my Centers of Influence name on it. So I'll get them a Prosperity Club notebook. I'll print their name on it and I'll bring it to them. It's $10, it's nothing. I, if they send me one client, I can buy like 100 of these. But um, so that's what we do, little stuff like that. This is a notebook that they're gonna use a long time. So they're gonna be thinking about you until this notebook is filled up and gone away. So that's what, another way to be memorable. So again, conversations are good. People say, you told me to go out for coffee, but I don't know what the heck to talk about when we go out for coffee. So maybe that conversation could be getting deeper into how did they start their business? Especially for people, I work with people who've had a business for five to seven years. So seven years in or 10 years in, you forgot all about the beginning. So maybe kind of reminiscing and going back and they, they really get to see how far they've come. Because a lot of times we're always focused on the future, like, oh, where we want to go, but we don't really focus on what we've done. And so if you get them to get a little nostalgic and say, wow, I've, gone, I've come a long way. And that, that deepens your relationship with them. Another question that I like, and it's kind of a selfish question, but it doesn't sound like it, so I like to disguise this. And it's, and it, <laughs> and it's how do you plan to grow your business? Now, you probably really don't care, but if you listen, you can hear how you can connect with them. How do you plan to grow your business? And they say, well, I've been thinking about getting online and doing this, and you're like, aha. I see some synergy here. I see some collaboration here. How do you want to grow your business? I, when I worked at Morgan Stanley, I came in with eight or 10 years in the business, but I'm working with guys who've been in the business 20 or 30 years. And I needed to partner with them because I was new in town. I was new to Atlanta. And so partnering with them was probably the only way I was going to get in because they had, so, they had you know, so, such deep relationships. And so I went in and I would ask them, how did you start your business? And so they would start to tell me. And then I say, well, how do you plan to grow your business? And if they say anything that was like, okay, you're 60, you're probably not gonna wanna do that. I, I can do that for you. I would listen for that. So the financial planning software was new at Morgan Stanley. So nobody, nobody used it. And I knew how to use the software because I'm, I'm the young kid, right? So I'm like, oh, no worries. You want to put financial planning in your practice? I'll do the financial plans. All you have to do is bring the clients. That sounds easy. So they, <laughs> they were like, oh, that works because I don't want to learn that software. They didn't have the, even the inclination, you know, or maybe even the, uh, the capacity sometimes to learn the software. So that was somewhere that I could give them what I had and they could, take, they could give me what they had. We just come up with a split and it may not be 50-50. You know, they've been working on this client for years. We would do a 70-30 split or something like that. But at this point, I'm in, you know, and only because I'm doing what I love. I love doing financial plans. I love software. Bring me some software, you know. But them, they're like, oh, I'm 67 years old. I don't want to learn anything new, especially not software. I barely know the hardware, you know. So, <laughs> so that was an easy way to get in. So when you ask them, how do they plan to grow their business, they want to talk about that. And even if they don't know, that's even better because you can give them some ideas. And especially if you're really good online, then it's like, oh, you don't know how you want to grow your business? Let me tell you. And now you're the genius. You're the expert, and they really need you. So this is a great way to, to forge those relationships, too. So be magical. One of the stories that I tell sometimes, I had a client that was retiring, and she, in passing, on the, at the end of our meeting, said, I'm going to Puerto Vallarta for my retirement party. You should come. And I was like, oh, OK, I, I will. And she's like, yeah, we're staying at the blah, blah, blah resort. And I'm like, OK, cool. I wrote it down, but I didn't tell her. And the day of her retirement party, I show up in Puerto Vallarta, and she's like, oh my gosh, you really came. He's like, this is my financial advisor. And I'm like, I'm the youngest one there. And like all these older, some people already retired, some people close to retirement. But at that moment, I was like magical. And she's like, you just appeared. <laughs> but it was great because she, she introduced me to all her retiring friends. And so I didn't tell her I was going to show up. And, and she gave me the invitation. So I was like, if she didn't mean it, she knows now not to tell me. <laughs> 
But if she did mean it, then I'm actually here. So, because sometimes you invite people to stuff and then they don't show up and you're like, oh, I didn't know you really meant it. Well, so this is, you know, that this is the time when you call them on that. And it was a lot of fun. I had fun. I met all the retirees. And so that's one way to be kind of magical. Um, but there are other less expensive ways to do that. But I mean, it's a vacation <laughs> and a write off. So, so you can attend their events. If they have events locally, um, you can go to their events. A lot of people like to be supported, and, and, and you never really know if people are going to support. You know, you put on an event, and it might be seven people there, and that doesn't feel really good. So if you say, oh, I'll come, and I'll bring a couple people, or I'll come, and I'll put it on my Facebook page or whatever, you just put it out there for them, then that's something they didn't ask you for that you gave them. And then you can also tell them about, if you find out what their favorite charity is, you can tell them about stuff that that charity is doing. And if you don't already have a platform yourself, then maybe you combine with them and say, hey, let's go volunteer on this day. And that feels good too. Um, another, another thing is when it comes to, oh, this is a great one that I like. If, if they are sort of known, you can put a Google alert for them and find out when they're in the news or something. And then you go and say, hey, I saw that article on you in the Wall Street Journal or whatever. Hopefully you have clients in the Wall Street Journal. But, you know, and you say, or centers of influence, you say, I saw this, and how great is that? You know, so uh, you should be proud of yourself. And so it looks like you're, like, following them, and you may or may not be, but you get this alert, and you know what they have going on. So that's a great way to show them that you care, show them that you're thinking about them, and that you know what's going on. And then you can invite them to the intimate events that you have. So the big events and the webinars are great. Of course, invite them there. Like I said, I invite my CPAs there. But then if you have an, a more intimate uh, 10 or less people, sometimes those events are better for you to really get to know and really get to connect with them. Because if it's just 10 or 12 people um, or seven people, then you can have really deep conversations. And you can really connect them with somebody that they can make a deeper conversation with or a deeper connection with. And oh, also telling them to bring a client with them or a friend with them that could become your client is important too. One, because it sounds like, you know, the more the mirror, you're like, oh, bring your best client. This is a great event. It's intimate. It's dinner. It's drinks. You know, it's at this pl fancy place. Bring your best client. They get to show off to their client. They didn't really do anything, and now their client thinks they're really cool, and so and they owe it all to you. Volunteering, this is giving again. I love to serve. So whether it's at church, if you're a part of a church, especially the mega churches, volunteer to do a workshop or um, a webinar for the church, and it would be exclu exclusive just for the church. So it sounds like you just gave your time something that you're the expert at, something that you usually pay, you charge for, you're going to do for the church for free. And that's, uh, you can do that for charities as well. And then um, there are day conferences that come to Atlanta all the time. And this is a tougher one, but you can volunteer to help out at some of those conferences, um, like some of you volunteer here at FinCon. If you volunteer to do that, you get a chance to meet so many different people. And of course, like I, I target dentists, so I would do something like the Hemant Dental Conference, and it's in Atlanta every year, and I would go and volunteer there, and I can meet a ton of dentists. So that's just an idea. It's a tough one, and it's a lot of work, but if you're really dedicated to getting in there, it's one that really works well. Another thing that I do, and this is one of my favorite things to do, and it is to volunteer at the private schools. And um, private schools have after-school programs just like public schools do. The thing is, we're a luxury brand, so public schools are not necessarily our uh, target market, but private schools are. So if I go and I volunteer there, which they always need help, they never have enough, no school ever has enough of anything, it's, it, including hands on deck. So if you go and you volunteer there, you get a chance to meet the parents who can become your clients with me being a financial therapist. That is a really great way for me to connect with people, especially biz business owners, the dentists. That's where the dentists send their children. That's where the doctors send their children. So the private schools are a great place, and even colleges as well. So you are the expert, so be the expert. So offer to speak if you're not already doing that. Offer to speak at networking events. A lot of networking events hire people to speak. I'm not, they're not always paying, but it's a great way to get people to know about you. 
um, charity events have speakers as well. And you may not be the keynote speaker, but you could be the person that introduces the keynote speaker. I've done that. And it sounds like a thankless job, and it is. But, <laughs> but at least you get to say who you are, and you get to introduce the speaker, and you get to actually meet the speaker, and so then you can get more information from them and, and maybe even collaborate with them on something in the future. Conferences like FinCon. Um, employee assistant programs, that's one of my favorites. Now, the, again, it's not the easiest thing to get into. It takes a little work and building a relationship. But I speak with a lot of the employee assistance programs. So I've spoken at the CDC, a lot of the law firms in um, Atlanta. And it's because the employee assistance program hires me to go in and speak. And they don't have, they have webinars, they have um, content, but they don't always have speakers. So if you like to speak, then this is a great place. Also, their content is usually not written by financial experts. It's written by, I don't know who, an HR person or something. And, and it needs a lot of work. Like, it's wrong. It's like, wait, that's not true. So you may even help them because you can go over their content and say, hey, let me help you out a little bit and give you some, you know, divulge some of the myths that you've created in this, this presentation. And so um, that's a great way. And then continuing education. This is a great way. I do continuing education for therapists, for attorneys, uh, HR professionals, real estate professionals. Real estate is the easiest one to get into. Um, a lot of t like with therapists, I sometimes have to partner with a therapist. So that's a little, you have to know somebody to get in that one. The HR professionals, the question. The real estate agents, um, I just went to the board and created the content and then have them come in. It, I, you don't, that's the easiest one, that one they don't have as many regulations. Like the, the therapy, the licensed professional counselor, that association, they require you to have a therapist in the room when you do it, especially I do an ethics um, talk. So they, uh, I have to partner with the therapist, but in real estate, you don't have to partner with a real estate agent. Um, and then HR, HR is a good one too because they need continuing education. So if you can put something together. And a lot of times they get a lot of financial questions because people think they know everything. And so they come and they're like, well, I don't know what to do with my 401k. And they're like, I don't either. So <laughs> if they know that you're a resource, I speak at um, SHRM, uh, the local, the regional version. But if they know that you're a resource, then they know they can call you and say, hey, I'm getting, I'm getting some questions and I don't know how to answer them. And you can say, oh, just send them to me. Or you can say, well, let me give you, know, give you some ideas on how you can answer that. Um, but those are the, I mean, we can talk more about it if you need ideas. But those are the ones that I do. The attorney continuing education is a little bit more difficult. It's like, it's like the therapy one. So some of them will be really easy, and some of them will be a little difficult. But just go into the target market, figure out your target market and then just put it into work and get it done. Because once you start doing it, it's created, you've got their approval, all you have to do is you know, go and present it now. And once you present it once, it's like, it's, you know, it's ingrained in you. It's your stuff, you're the expert. And be a collaborator. Collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. I can't say it more, I can't say it enough, because you don't have to do it by yourself. You know, everything, that, everything that has to get done doesn't have to get done by you. You can collaborate, especially if you're collaborating with people who have the similar target market, but do a different thing than you do. So collaborations can really work. Um, for instance, Patrice Washington and I, we collaborate. We're in the same industry. We have the same target market, but we do two different things. I talk more about, like I said, the money cycle. Earn, grow, protect, gift, and enjoy your money. I also talk a lot about investing. Patrice doesn't talk about investing. He talks more about real estate and personal finance. I don't talk much about real estate, so I make sure people know. I didn't used to do live events. So whenever somebody wants to go to a live event, I'm like, go to Patrice's event, because I don't do those. I do small, intimate dinners where we sit down at a table. Um, so if you want that, then you come to me. And so we, we collaborate, and, and even on our online marketing. So other social media experts, it's, especially if you live in a town, like I live in Atlanta and Georgia, there's some neighboring states, there's Tennessee, there's North Carolina, um, South Carolina. So if you know that there are other people around you, you can kind of collaborate together, even to do events, if you want to do a bigger event, like in a hotel or something like that, and you know you can get a couple people to bring in 
the people, because trying to do it by yourself is really difficult and really filling a room is, is, not, is not easy at all. But if you can combine a couple people with you, then if you bring 10 people and they bring 10 people, and you know, before you know it, the room is filled. And so don't try and do it on your own. But, it, but if you guys are in neighboring states, then they won't feel like your competition because they're going to take their people back to Tennessee and take their people back to South Carolina um, or Georgia or whatever. So you find the center, the center place. One place that's always talking is the barbershop. If you don't know that, then you probably haven't gotten your hair cut in a while. <laughs> but the barbershops and the hair salons, that is where news gets traded. And before there was the internet, everybody talked about what was going on. You found out who got divorced and who got married and, you know, and who had what mon amount of money and who bought a new car. You found that out in the barbershop. And that's still happening, although we do have online. Now we just bring our phones and we're like, hey, did you see this? You know, but they're talking about it in the barbershop. So go to the barbershop. Ask them if you can place some things there. They don't really care. They're like, hey, whatever. We have room, space. We have people. People need something to do while they're waiting to get their hair done. So especially women, we're in there like hours and hours. So bring them content. Bring them something that they can use, whether it's flyers or a poster, whatever. I'm big on offline marketing because online marketing is good, and it, but it moves really, really quickly. But if you think about it, offline marketing kind of st sticks for a while. I can wear this t-shirt a few times and people will remember it. <laughs> you know, posters, people come by and if they need to see it seven times, they go to the barbershop seven times and finally they say, I need to call Presidential Lifestyle. You know, I've seen that poster a couple of times. So it sticks for a little while. It doesn't move as fast as online does. And then tie two things together. So I talked earlier about the, the makeup and money uh, conversation we had, the you know, financially fabulous. We also did in, invest in you and cocktails and money, which was a really good conversation. <laughs> Get people drunk and then really talk about their money. <laughs> cocktails and money, um, love and money. You know, the, uh, one conversation was, you know, do you love money? And whoa, was that? It was like nobody wanted to actually admit that until they got some of those cocktails in them, and then they're like, <laughs> but you know, having that conversation and some of the the things that we've said about money that that it's like, is it true or or not? You know, is the love of money really the root of all evil? Let's let's have this conversation. Um, cleanliness and money. So that is a really fun conversation because again, it's a luxury. It's a luxury brand, so if people are talking about their cleaning, ladies, that's a, that's a totally different target market. But it is a great conversation to have because if you are still, there's, there's one conversation about money that said, if you are still cleaning your own house, then you are keeping yourself from doing income generating activity. And so that was a conversation we had. Um, so I can come up with all kinds of conversations. Call me if you need some ideas. If you want to connect with me, you can go to my website. I have business cards on the table there and um, some up here, but kenaycorder.com and also presidentiallifestyle.com. But on Facebook, on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram. I'm the most on LinkedIn and um, Facebook, but you can connect with me however you like to connect.